Pete, thank you very much for that gracious uh, introduction. And, uh, you know, someone up here said, well, uh, the gentleman just said, just, I'm just going to turn it over to Pete. That's, that's the way it is working with him, doing radio and television, those kinds of things. He just makes things uh, very, very easy. Uh, <clears throat> reaching higher. Uh, you know, that's something that I really believe in. Uh, and really, that has been our team motto. Uh, theme for our team since our last year's banquet. In fact, uh, Pete emceed that, uh, that banquet. And uh, it was the theme of our banquet. We actually had the stage really decorated up uh, with uh, a church-like theme with uh, uh, the stained glass windows you know, behind the stage, the entire auditorium uh, like a church. We had the Clemson Gospel Choir there singing uh, songs before we started and, and, and during the uh, during the banquet, and, and they were excellent. Uh, but the thing the thing that we were trying to talk to our players about and our fans about uh, was just what Pete said. Every year we've gotten better and better, but we're not satisfied, and uh, so we're reaching higher. And one of the issues that we had uh, putting on this banquet was we had to have it on Sunday in order for a number of our parents to be able to come to the banquet, honor their, their kids, and then be able to get back for work and that kind of thing. And, you know, here we are having this, you know, this church thing. The other problem we had is Jack Leggett had a big, our baseball coach had a big uh, double header that day. We're trying to schedule, you know, around that. So we ended up finally having a banquet at, at about 1.30. And so I got up before the group because it was Sunday. We have a church thing. We have a lot of, uh, obviously, a lot of folks that, that want to go to church. And, you know, I said to them, I said, for those of you um, that uh, you know, you know, got to uh, or didn't, you know, get to go to church, uh, this counts. <laughs> and for those of you that did go to church, you get extra credit. And uh, but we had just a wonderful banquet, honoring last year and that kind of thing. But the thing that the big deal with the banquet, as far as I was concerned, was looking ahead and putting out there for everybody involved in our program that we're reaching high. And, and I certainly see an awful lot of that as I look at the athletes, uh, the student athletes uh, in, in this room. Um, I uh, currently, speaking of reaching higher and, and, and excellent, I currently serve as the NABC president, as president of our, all of our college coaches around the country. And a couple of weeks ago, I had quite an honor. I, I was... Uh, asked to be the presenter at the uh, uh, the first annual College Basketball Hall of Fame, and we inducted four people. Out of all of the people who have ever played or coached college basketball in that inaugural class, we inducted four people. Uh, it's not like the Naismith Hall of Fame, which honors college pros, uh, international and all that, just, just for college basketball. And up on that stage, and I had a chance to present uh, trophies or awards uh, to four people. The first was the grand, the great grandson of James Naismith, who obviously, uh, you know, invented the game of basketball. And they told all the stories about James Naismith, who at at one time was an alcoholic and a high school dropout. He was talking about a person who turned their life around and went on to invent uh, the great game of basketball, which we all enjoy. Uh, two coaches on the stage. Uh, first of all, there was Dean Smith, who just happens to uh, have won more you know, college basketball games than anyone in the uh, history of the game until Bobby Knight's about you know, ready to break that right now. Uh, the other was uh, John Wooden, uh, who is the only person in the Naismith Hall of Fame as a player and a coach. He's a great All-American at Purdue, and obviously at UCLA he won uh, nine uh, NCAA championships, which, you know, we're all just trying to get to, to win one, to get to the Final Four today. You're talking about excellence. And then the two players uh, were Oscar Robinson, uh, who was a three-time uh, college player of the year at the University of Cincinnati, and in his career in the NBA went on and averaged a triple-double. You know, you're, they're talking about triple-double for LeBron or for Jason Kidd. He averaged a triple-double. Uh, in the NBA. And then the final player, uh, speaking of excellence and, 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 in my opinion, the greatest uh, player uh, of all time at any level, was Bill Russell. You know, Bill Russell in his junior and senior year in San Francisco, San Francisco won the NBA championship. And then in the next 
13 years, he won 11 NBA championships as a player and the last two as a player coach. So, uh, you know, what a winner he was. And just being on the stage with those folks and being able to present them award and that kind of thing, you can just hope a fraction of, the, of their, their success, their drive, their reaching higher rubs off on them. Um, the season so far, uh, you know, Speed said it's gone, uh, you know, very well so far. We're 10, 10 and 0 at this point. Uh, you know, I think we've had some some very uh, you know solid wins. Uh, we started off the season with the tournament uh, in in Norfolk, Virginia. Uh, we played Arkansas State, played Mama, and then we played Old Dominion, the host team, uh, in the finals. And you know, Old Dominion went on to beat Georgetown, you know, a week later, and, and they were in the finals in the NIT last year and all that. So that was a pretty solid win. Uh, then we beat Mississippi State out of the SEC. That was another solid win for us. And then, you know, last week we had a tough week in that we had three games, two of them on the road. And uh, uh, Minnesota, at Minnesota in the Big Ten ACC Challenge, that's the third straight year that we won in that, that tournament. And then we had another one, Pete. We had another game in on the road. Mustang. Mustang, would you stand up? <laughs> 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 Do you remember that game in between? I'll be honest, I didn't even know what basketball season was going on. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Really? Another team. <laughs> 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 All right. Three dollar rubber. One of the great things about our one of the great things about our state is that rivalry uh, that exists between Flint and South Carolina. And uh, one of the best, uh, the prep, it's, it's the strongest, the best uh, um, that I've ever been around, and, and that's one of the great things about the state, where you can have uh, members of the same family, being Clemson fan, and South Carolina fan, that kind of thing. But thank you for being good natured about it. <laughs> 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 um, but uh, you know, I, I told our guys as we were getting ready to play Wofford in the in our last game before we had 13 minute break for exams. Is this is our final game on the court, and uh, if you win this game and you go 10 and 0, uh, you've got an A in your you know your first semester, your final exams, and that kind of thing. So I so I really don't as much as I uh, we we've got a lot of room for improvement, but it's hard for me to complain to them a lot right now, particularly since they're in exams. Uh, but they've done a good job uh, so far. We've got four more non-conference games before we get in the ACC. And then, of course, uh, you know, the, the real wars start. Uh, I, I really believe that the ACC is as tough uh, from top to bottom as it has been since I've been here, and this will be the fourth year. And, and the first year was incredible. Uh, the second year was, was, was excellent as well. There was some talk about the ACC being down last year, and certainly I didn't, uh, you know, I didn't feel that way. But I think because so many people return veteran teams, including ourselves, you're going to see an awful lot of close games, and you're going to see an awful lot of people uh, beating up on each other. I think on paper, North Carolina looks to be, uh, you know, the, the class with so many uh, uh, returning players as well as an, an outstanding uh, recruiting class and been able to watch them a little bit on television. They certainly look awesome. Uh, but then I think beyond that, I think you could pick seven or eight. Uh, teams that, uh, and say that team is going to finish second and, and, and you'd have a legitimate uh, argument. So it's, I think it's wide open. Uh, I think uh, all the teams are going to beat up on each other, including North Carolina. I think they're going to take their bumps and bruises. Uh, the history is any guide to that as far as the ACC is concerned. It's going to be very difficult to go on the road and win. And uh, as far as we're concerned, you know, I tell our players all the time, if you can win at home and split on the road, you're going to have a pretty good season. We can go into the ACC uh, with a tremendous non-conference record and, and take care of business that way. Uh, then we will be, we will attain our goal of reaching higher. Our goal is absolutely to participate uh, in the NCAA tournament this year. Uh, and, uh, you know, once that happens, then the sky's the limit. I think George Mason showed that the last year. And, You've seen teams over the years, you know, go for a long run in the NCAA. But first of all, you got to get there. And I do believe that uh, we have the players' experience uh, you know, to get there, and we look forward to uh, to making that happen. Uh, I, I do think our future is bright. Uh, we continue to uh, recruit in a solid way. I believe. I think any time that you 
bring in a group of players year to year, and at least two of those players play a prominent role in your team, I think you're having, and you're successful, I think you're having uh, solid recruiting uh, success. And we certainly feel like we're doing that. On this current team, uh, you know, local guy Trevor Booker, South Carolina Player of the Year last year, is, um, you know, he's just been outstanding. Uh, I think if, if there's been a surprise this year, it's been not that he can play, not that he's had big games, but how solid he's been. He has not had a, a poor outing yet, and, and that's pretty surprising for a freshman. And he's playing the five position for us, although, you know, I, I really do feel like we're playing two forwards up front, both mobile, both can guard point guards, uh, and, and can do a lot of different things. And Trevor's certainly uh, one of those guys. I think uh, his future is, is, is so very bright. Uh, I think he will be an all-ACC player, and I think he'll have an opportunity to play at the next level if he continues to work. So we're really pleased to have gotten the best player in the state, and that's playing, paying dividends for us. Another young man, David Potter, is in our rotation. He's from the Washington, D.C. area, although he played his high school basketball down in Florida at the IMG Academy. And, uh, and David plays a wing for us and, and is in our rotation. He's had a couple big nights where he's had 10 or 12 points and that kind of thing. And he's just going to get better and better and better. And uh, we've got two other freshmen I think are, are really going to help us. Uh, and uh, Carol Spetrakonis, a 6'11 uh, and a half, uh, Lithuanian kid of about 270 pounds, and AJ Tyler. At six foot nine and a half, uh, about two two hundred thirty pounds. Now uh, this current uh, recruiting class that we signed in the early period, I really like. Um, we've got uh, uh, Terrence Oglesby from Tennessee, a long range uh, uh, shooting guard, averaging about twenty seven uh, in a game, and uh, he just gives us more range and, and shooting ability to go along with Casey Rivers, who's really lighting it up for us, uh, you know, from the outside. Uh, Jare Grant, uh, probably your longtime Clemson fans remember that name. Uh, Horace Grant, uh, the great uh, forward here, his, it's his nephew, and Harvey Grant, who started at Clemson, went on to Oklahoma and played great there. Uh, that's his father, and uh, he's about six, nine and a half. Uh, plays at the Matha High School in Washington, D.C. A great program, and uh, he'll probably be ranked somewhere in the top five in the country, if not number one, when it's all said and done. So we're expecting uh, great things out of him, another one of those mobile big guys. And then the, and the last guy, DeMonte Stitt, is uh, from right up the road here outside of uh, Charlotte. Uh, I think he's the best player in North Carolina, a point guard at about six foot two, and uh, he is averaging in the mid-30s right now in high school. In fact, I just heard, he, heard his thumb, so he may, might be out for six weeks or so. But that's the guys that are in that next class uh, for the next year. And again, I think they're solid. We continue to recruit in that class. We continue to recruit, obviously, in the uh, next two classes coming up, the juniors and the sophomores, and all the way down into the ninth grade. Uh, it's the light blood of our, blood of our program, and, and, and we continue to work, work hard at it. Uh, before I close and, and open it up for questions, uh, I'd like to congratulate uh, Chase uh, Holmes on uh, just a, a great honor, and, and, and hopefully you'll be back here week after week. And, and, and coach, you'll go, uh, you'll go far with this young man. Tiara, I'd like to congratulate you. Chase, why don't you stand up and keep standing. Uh, Tiara, congratulations uh, to you. Uh, it looks like that you're not only playing basketball, you're doing a lot of other things, including your school work and ROTC. Congratulations to you. Would you stand? And then finally, Rick. Rick uh, Carlisle. Uh, he stepped out. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. yeah. And he's a big Clemson fan. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, let me have everybody else stand along with them. I won't put you through an exercise that our team goes through, that we put, uh, put our team through sometime. And uh, hopefully it will resonate uh, with you, and particularly our athletes. Uh, how about if everybody just raises your hand? Just raise your hand. And raise it higher. Mustang, raise it higher. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's the problem. Everybody else, raise it higher. <laughs> and higher. Mm. All right. My point is, and, I, and we do this exercise with our team when we huddle up, and we tell them to raise their hand. And the point is very simple. If you're told to raise your hand and you decide to raise your hand, you raise it 
but you can always raise it high. Raise it high. What's that I hear popping over there? <laughs> oh, I heard my drop. But the point is, oh, have a seat. The point is that you can always reach high. And certainly, I, I want our athletes to understand that as they go along in their uh, athletic endeavors, but also your academic uh, endeavors and things you do off the court. On the court and off the court, you can always retire. And that's something that I believe in. That's something at Clemson University that we will continue uh, to do. And uh, I, I really appreciate you all having me here to, to allow me to articulate uh, that thought in, in, in uh, the state of our team. Thank you. Okay, I'll open up for uh, just a few questions. Uh, yes. How do we, how do our players stand academically? Do you, do you expect to have any any problems as far as the second semester goes, or do you think we'll be okay? Or? Well, I hope not. <laughs> I hope not. Obviously, we're going into final exams, and unlike South Carolina, our final exams count a lot. <laughs> Thirteen days off, and I've made it clear to you know our guys that basketball takes a back seat, uh, you know, just a back seat at this point. Concentrate on your academics. We gave them uh, today off. We'll practice uh, Saturday, Sunday. We'll give them Monday and Tuesday off, uh, and then we'll give them a day off later in the week. And we would never do that during the season. So uh, everybody's in good shape going in, but you know, our, as I, as I said, our exams count a lot, a lot, and hopefully we'll do well. Hopefully we'll pass that exam as well. Yes. Um, Vernon Hamilton graduating. Who, who are the candidates to take his place for next year? Well, uh, you know, I just mentioned DeMonte Stitt. I don't know if I mentioned he was a point guard or not, but uh, he's a point guard that, uh, you know, again, I think he's the best player in North Carolina and one of the top point guards in the country, so he's going to have an opportunity uh, to, uh, you know, step in and play. Yes, sir. Coach, uh, first of all, it uh, seems like you're a class act, and hopefully this job, the job that you're doing at Clemson will land you a better job in the future. <laughs> 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 uh, see, 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 here's the deal. You're cocky to Spur State. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, the question I had to ask you was, um, when you were recruiting a, a player, can you get a top-notch player that you think that might leave after one or two years? compared to somebody who might stay four years, might play for you, and make your team better. Would you prefer one over the other one? Well, yeah. <laughs> I prefer the guy that might leave, because that means that he's, he's a great player. And uh, you know, hopefully, you know, while he's there, if it's two or three years, we're able to make an impact on his life and, and certainly uh, move him along the line to getting a degree and getting an education. But there's, you know, if the guy's leaving, Unless he's getting very bad advice, that means he's awfully, awfully good, and, and you do need, uh, you know, you do need talent to, to win. So that's, I don't see that as a problem. Yes. You said you signed four during the early period. Do you have any room for another one? Three. Okay. Do you have any more room? Well, uh, as of right now, no. But you know, those things. Uh, you know, the last the three years that we've been here, we've lost players at the end of the year either by transferring because. You know, they didn't want to play or because, uh, you know, they didn't want to do things the way we wanted to do it in terms of going to class and taking care of responsibilities and, and, and those kinds of things. So, and I think most major programs, uh, it's always laugh when I hear that question because I think most major programs lose somebody. You know, you got 15 guys, 14 guys. Most major programs lose somebody. Generally speaking, it's because, you know, they want to go somewhere and maybe play a more prominent role, play more minutes, that kind of thing which maybe they can get it the place they're at, but they don't necessarily want to work for them. <laughs> you know, so so, uh, so we, that's why we continue to recruit, because every year we've lost somebody. Yeah. Coach, I'm just curious, when you go to a game now, the bench keeps getting longer and longer, as opposed to when we were growing up. How many assistant coaches do those teams have, and how do you divide up responsibility? Well, we, there's a limit. There's an NCAA limit in terms of how many you can have. But, you know, you've got team doctors, and, you know, all trainers and all kinds of things uh, there. But we can have three full-time assistant coaches, and then we can have a uh, director of basketball operations who can't coach. And then you can have a GA who can't coach, who's just a, who's a person who's going to, going to graduate school and is uh, 
when it's getting his feet wet, he's doing a lot of clerical stuff for you, that kind of thing. So there's a limit on the number of coaches that you can have. But some people set different people on, you know, set different people on team doctors. And for example, a home game, we'll have two team doctors, and we'll have two trainers, and I'm trying to think who else sits down there. And of course, our managers. You know, we've got, uh, and we in fact we set a lot of our managers behind the bench, but we've got five or six uh, student managers. So that's what I mean, that's what you're seeing. But there's a limit on the number of systems you can have, except South Carolina. <laughs> 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 a couple, couple more. The, uh, one to ask you about, uh, if you would just uh, comment on uh, James Mays. I'm just uh, amazed this year at one his interior passing, but also just his court awareness. I mean, he just seems so much more aggressive, even though he was very aggressive previously. This year, he just seems to have really taken it up a notch. I was just wondering about your comments. Well, I mean, I just think it's experience. I, I think, uh, you know, every year we expect our players to get better. And James, certainly, while he was away from us, worked hard, uh, you know, worked on his game individually, lifting weights and, and some of those kinds of things. But I think just, just experience, I think kids, kids see more. And I think even, you know, next year he'll see even more. He'll, when the game, when you start to see the game in slow motion, even though you're playing fast, you know that really, and a lot of that's just being able to both be uh, fired up yet relaxed on the court. And I think that's experience, and that's 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 why I think that you see uh, guys play so much better when the juniors and seniors on the road uh, with all the noise and, and and all of those things that are going that's going on. They just have the ability to relax at the same time that they're intense, and I think that's that's what you see. Hey, Coach. Yes. How much of a premium do you put on in-state recruits? For instance, if you got a kid, you know, it's in-state versus kids out-of-state. So even I could see where you know you probably want to keep the in-state kid. If they're close, maybe the in-state kid's not quite as good. I mean, you is there in your recruiting philosophy? Is there a premium put on a kid in-state? Well, I, mean, I think that uh, most, I'll say, 90% of uh, basketball programs you want to recruit inside out. Uh, you know, for all the reasons that you would think, uh, support, uh, interest, uh, you know, all of those things. And it's just not very often that things are even, whether it be, you know, you've got a number of things that you're looking at, obviously talent, you're looking at academics, you're looking at, uh, you know, temperament, uh, what kind of their team player, uh, you, know, you know, all those kinds of things, those intangibles, generally speaking, you're not going to find that it's even. I mean, it could happen. But, uh, but no, I, I think that you've got to be able to recruit inside out in your state. Uh, you, you need to be able to have at least a base number of players from your state uh, in order to be successful. And, and in our case, North Carolina is so close that that's almost like our state. Georgia is so close, it's almost like our state. So you're always going to see a number of guys on, you know, on, our, on our team and in our program from South, South Carolina, North Carolina, and Georgia. That, that's Clemson territory. So I think, you know, you need to take care of your territory and do pretty well in your territory. And it just helps fan interest. It helps media attention. Uh, it just helps in, in, in so many ways. 